That is the most exciting 24 hours of golf I have seen in a very long time. I have just finished watching the DP World Tour in Dubai, the Monday finish. I'm so excited to bring you this video because what I put on Twitter was absolutely popping off. I'm going to say one thing right now. If that cheat won, something needed to be done. I know that sounds bold. I'll explain it in this video. Okay, guys, welcome to a brand new video. Don't forget, on Bat9 Films, we put four videos up a week. So do subscribe, do turn on the bell, and I don't want you to miss any of this content because this is a really, really... Oh, I can't wait to bring you this video. Now, any of these talking points, do get down in those comments. We are about discussing everything in the news, everything controversial, and I want to hear your opinions on what we're saying in this video. Okay, so we're going to start with PJ Tour, which sounds really, really strange because for the first time in a very, very long time, it wasn't as exciting as the DP World Tour. I can't believe I'm saying that. Okay, so on the PJ Tour, Max Homer shot a final round of minus six to win by two with a total of minus 13 to clutch his sixth PJ Tour win. Now, so this sounds really strange to say, becoming from the same person who lost his PGA Tour twice as a young pro. Played a full season in 2017 without a top 70 finish and who needed four straight birdies to finish the final round on the Corn for a Tour regular season in 2018 just to keep his job. He's now won six times, 16th in the world and second on the FedEx Cup rankings. Now, I've already chosen my picks for the major winners of 2023, but could he have just thrown his hat in the ring? What a win from Max Homer. Congratulations. Now, this wasn't, well, obviously, that was an unbelievable performance and an unbelievable final round. But Will Zalatoris, now, if you hate the word that begins with the Y and associate with your putting, just close your ears for the next 10 seconds. All I'm thinking is the yips. Now, I have not seen yips this bad, and this thing on Twitter was absolutely popping off the close down view on his putting stroke. I have not seen the yips this bad since. I'm really. I can't believe I'm saying this. Ernie Els. About five years ago, he really struggled with the yips. And Will Zalatoris is going down that same route. I remember Ernie going to the arm lock putter. Will Zalatoris is using the arm lock putter. If you haven't seen this video, I think his putter moved more inwards towards his feet than it did back to make the putting stroke. I mean, he did hole a putt, but honestly, that video, if he's looked at that on Twitter, he would have been like, oh my god, what's going on? I mean, I do feel sorry for him because every other department of his game is so strong. It must be such a stressful thing going onto those greens. Now, I wonder what way he's going to go with this. If he has seen it, and if you haven't seen that video, do go and check that out. Okay, DP World Tour, the Rory, debacle, Reed, Ding Dong battle that even started before the tournament even started on the Wednesday. Like, I think it's really changed your perceptions of Reed and really changed your perceptions of Rory, whether it's right or wrong. But before we talk Reed and Rory, by the way, I can't wait to talk about this. This is so exciting. Hatton, Hatton, my friend, Hatton. Hatton spends £3,000, yes, you heard me right, £3,000 rebooking a flight after making the cut. Now, that sounds bizarre. Okay, so essentially on the 54th hole and every single tournament, we have a 54-hole cut on the DP World Tour. He held a 50-foot putt to clutch and get inside the cut mark. So essentially, he rebooked his flight on, let's say, the Saturday morning because of the Monday finish and everything was a day later and thought, oh, I'm never going to make the cut. Let's rebook it. Let's get home to the UK, see my coach, see family, whatever. Move on to the next event. Um, <laughs> with him to much of his dismay, head in his hands, he's now like, oh my God, I've made the cut. Now, let's not feel sorry for him for one minute because he finished a tie 38 and for a Rolex event, he's going to be making way more than the £3,000 it cost him to rebook his flight. Okay, now brace yourselves. Brace yourselves for this. Patrick Reed has been at it again. You heard me right at the start of this video, but been at it again. So before we even get into the final round, we need to discuss the tree controversy. Okay, so on the par 4, 17th in Dubai is a reachable par 4. Now, 
the green is actually slightly blind from the tee because of the high palm trees. So if you're going for this green, you can't actually see where your ball finished. You're basically relying on the crowd's reaction to if it gets close and if it's in a good position. So Reed decides to go for this, right? Now, it hits a palm tree, okay? Think what hits a palm tree. So Reed hits this tee shot and... By all means, it was a very good tee shot, to be fair, and got a little bit unlucky. So it hits this palm tree, and after arriving at the scene, Reed was reportedly told by the marshals it had gone into the tree and not come down. Okay, one of the spectators had a pair of binoculars, and at this point, Reed goes, Oh, can I use them to see if I can see my ball up the tree? So... Bear this in mind, I said right before that it was unsighted, Reed would have no idea to what tree this ball had hit and if it had even stayed up there, okay? So he would have had no idea. He's going off what the marshals are saying. So he's then used his binoculars and seen his ball up the tree, or said he's seen his ball up the tree. Now this is where it gets a little bit juicy. After the third round had ended, Sky Sports replayed this footage and identified it, it, the ball had hit a different tree to where Reed had seen his ball. Okay, remember this. The marshal said it hit one tree. Reed's then used binoculars to say he's seen his ball in this tree. Sky Sports, after the third round, have identified it's hit a completely different tree. Now, I'm going to say right now, that is outright cheating and something has to be done about that. You've got honest guys, right? Listen to this. You've got honest guys scrapping around, trying to make their card, keep their money, and trying to build a career, and you've got this guy cheating right at the top of the game. I know you might not be able to do something in play because the round's ended, but something has to be done. If you can see on video after the round that he has blatantly said it's in a different tree when you can see it's hit another tree, then what's going on? What's going on? Now, we need a little bit of sympathy here for the rules official. The rules official won't have seen this, and... From memory, there is a rule to say that they can't use anything from the TV because there was a whole debacle with Jordan Spieth and this whole thing of people writing in, which I get. I totally get that argument. But if we can see after the round that it's hit a different tree, then something has to be done. So Reed says to the rules official, I can identify my ball in this tree, to which he takes a drop. Now, after the round, Reed was asked in an interview, could you 100% say it was your ball? He replied saying, I would have gone back to the tee if it wa if I wasn't 100%. Well, you weren't 100%. One, you didn't see it hit it. Two, I've identified it hit a different tree. So what ball have you seen? What ball have you seen? Okay, now guys, I want to know what you think about that. I feel really strongly about that because this is not the first time that he has been done. Okay, let's get into all things good here because despite all that, it was an absolute ding-dong battle down the final few holes. Reed throughout the final round looked very calm, very collective and very strong. Rory was a little bit scrappy throughout that round. It comes to the final few holes. Reed bogeyed 16, bogeyed 17 and Rory birdie 17. Now, Rory is the group behind. So... This is how it plays out. Reed is middle of the fairway after a nice, beautiful drive, to be fair to him, down the 18th. He decides to go for this green. It is a reachable par five for these guys. These guys, probably not me and you. Very, very long and a lot of water. I would have definitely laid up. He hits it to about 70 feet after an unbelievable rescue, and he has an eagle putt. Now, this is a big putt because if he makes this, he leapfrogs Rory. He doesn't. He makes a birdie, but this forces Rory now. They're both tied. Rory's now back walking down from his tee shot. So Rory has to make a birdie down 18 to beat Reed. Now, Rory got a little bit lucky with his tee shot. It literally finished on the line. And I mean on the line, it nearly ended up in the water. After hitting a cozy one, the adrenaline was running through and it went boom, pinged down there. So he laid up, laid up to his favorite yardage, hits this wedge on to about 20 feet so there's still a lot of work to do here now he did get a nice read off Callum Shinkwin who put it before him which I think definitely helped him uh, understand what his putt was going to do now if we go back to sort of round one two and three Rory had had a bit of trouble on 18 and I definitely think that influenced his decision on right I'm going to lay up worst case in a playoff if I go for this we could lose everything but it didn't matter he held it downhill, left to right, boom, back of the net. Now, there was a little bit of needle in his interview afterwards. 
And this really did chuckle me. I'm going to literally quote what he said. This one means a little bit more than it should. And that is definitely 100% aimed at Patrick Reed. Now, I'm going to end this by just saying, Rory, what a performance. A lot of pressure, even more pressure. And definitely the emotions because of who he was up against. Even though they weren't in the same group, the emotions could have run away with him. He could have got too invested, gone for it, going, I'm going to get this. But he didn't. He stayed calm, he stayed collected, even didn't play his best golf, and got the job done. But something has to be done. If we can see that he's cheated, hit one tree, identify another, now that's downright wrong, in my opinion. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, do subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell. I want to hear your thoughts on this too.